Hello everyone and welcome to Ocean Cadence. Today in this video, we will be undertaking the topic of air bottles that is the air reservoirs present on board the ship. As you can see, the air bottle is a cylindrical assembly that is it's cylindrical in shape and present on board in usually in two in numbers. That is the main air bottle I am talking about. So, the first question that is but natural to arise in everybody's mind is why do we need an air bottle in it in the first place? As we know that the positive starting of the main engine, the starting of the auxiliary engine as well as the other sections need compressed air in its refined form. We know that the main engine needs a large volume of air at a very high pressure for the starting air kick and so does the auxiliary engine. So, to always keep this positively stored high pressurized air available and ready to be provided at any instant, we need a particular assembly that has the volume, volume and the capacity to do so. And that is where the air bottle comes into play. The air bottles are also available in different forms that is it can be available for the control air through the control air bottle or for the quick closing valves in a separate unit in, e in either the fire station or the emergency generator locations. But when we are talking exclusively about air bottles, we have to discuss primarily about the main air bottles that are available on board. Now, since we are clear that the purpose the air bottle serves is to store and provide air readily or for onboard systems. So, we should also be aware where this air is utilized except for the main engine and auxiliary engine. This air is being utilized in the control air system. This air is being utilized in the cleaning processes, in the chipping and buffing processes that are being carried out on deck. This air is being readily utilized through air heads and walls that are available in the engine room for other processes such as cleaning of filters and for other maintenance tasks for testing and for other tasks that are available that are being conducted on board. So, we know that the air has to be stored in top notch quality that means the air should be dry, it should be dense, it should be free of oil and all the other factors should be in line that is why we call it top notch quality. So, before we go on the further processes that are uh, included in the air leading into the air bottle, let us see the construction of the air bottle. As I discussed in the opening of the video itself, you can see that the air bottle is cylindrical in shape. Now, why cylindrical in shape? So, we know that any structure that is supposed to be a high pressure vessel, if it has sharp corners, those sharp corners inevitably become stress raises. Once they become stress raises, these are the places that are the most feeble and most prone to failure because as the name suggests, stress raises are the points where the stress locking and the stress concentration is the highest in a particular given assembly. So, in order to cancel that out, we always use elliptical or spherical shapes for high pressure vessels. So, as you can see in the top corners as well as the bottom corners, the edges are cylindered out in a way that there are no sharp stress points. Except for these, it is also necessary to understand that there should not be any other modifications or any other unnecessary openings except for the ones that are originally approved in the design of the air bottle. In this diagram, as you can see, some of the essential elements of the air bottle are the designated pressure gauge to show the pressure of the air bottle, the manhole cover that is supposed to provide man entry and access for the air bottle cleaning, maintenance and other procedures, the drain that is helpful to drain out the moisture and the oil content mixture within the air bottle whatever whenever it gets accumulated, the inlet line which is supposed to lead the air from the main air compressor outlet into the air bottle the outlet line along with the outlet valve that is supposed to lead the air out and onto the machinery for which we are designated to use this air. The fusible plug and the relief valve. So, before I go further because these 
topics the 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 elements that i told you at last the fusible plug and relief valve will come under the safety section of the air bottle so before we go any further i would like to remind you that the safety elements that is the relief valve fusible plug as well as the drain line are into a cluster and i would be explaining them differently in the later half of this video now i would like to remind you in this diagram that even though we have shown the relief valve and the fusible plug adjacently the regulation says that if the fusible plug is directly mounted onto the air bottle the relief valve does not need to be mounted directly onto the relief uh, onto the air bottle and it can be mounted onto the discharge line leading from the compressor to the air bottle but in order to facilitate the better understanding we are showing it in the clustered form so let us begin the construction element first before going on to the safety element as you can see the manhole is the only access or the entry point that can be used to inspect the internals of the air bottle so it is very clear that the dog clutch handle is the one that is holding this manhole cover now why so because any pressure vessel is supposed to be closed in such a way that the manhole cover closing the pressure vessel is always locked from the inside that is it is pushed from the inside and then tightened on to the surface of the pressure vessel so when you see the uh, deeper analysis of this opening you will find that the manhole door cover is pressed in from the inside it is lifted from the inside and the dog clutch handle is tightened through the help of studs and nut by pressing this by tightening this nut and pressing the door more outward and outward in between the door surface and the bottle surface there is a paper gasket that is being fit to provide the sealing surface now by doing so what happens is that when the compressed air is being filled into the uh, cylindrical vessel into the air bottle this compressed air in turn pushes the cover more tightly onto the surface of the air bottle and thus higher pressure exerted along with the pressure that you have used in order to tighten the manhole door will hold up the manhole door even better but there is also a tricky portion suppose if you have carried out maintenance on the air bottle or inspection on the air bottle now when you are tightening the manhole door initially you will tighten it to a certain force and you will feel that it has become sufficiently tight but what happens is when you further tighten the and when you further raise the pressure inside the air bottle by filling it with the compressed air that is coming from the compressor outlet you will observe that this manhole door has become a little slack on your hand in way, in the way that the nut will feel a little slack on your hand that is because by exerting 30 bar pressure from inside we are pushing it more tighter onto the surface and hence the studs have become a little free and the nut has moved little outside so that is why you feel that it has become little slack so further tighten it when as the air bottle keeps filling until the point the final pressure in the air bottle has been achieved and this is the one i am talking about when the nuts are to be manually tightened so specifically uh, we have to pay attention that this is the manual tightening procedure so the final tightening has to take place when the air bottle is completely filled with compressed air up to its capacity now since we are discussing the manhole cover and we are discussing the inspection part i would also like to remind you that the air bottle inspection is a pms item on board ships this pms item is generally available with a difference of almost one year interval the inspections that have to be carried out in the air bottle will include but not only be limited to the coating of the epoxy that is available on the insides of the air bottle so you have to inspect the epoxy coating and make sure that it is well spread and has not been damaged under any external forces or any external ingress because then that particular point will become the vulnerable point within the air bottle after checking that you have to check the downside of the air bottle that is the lower portion and make sure that the oil accumulation and the moisture accumulation that has that inevitably happens inside has not led to any weak spots occur in the air bottle by doing so you make sure that there are no local stress points easily available within the air bottle you also have to inspect that the openings for all the other mountings 
such as the pressure gauge, such as the uh, relief valve or the fusible plug or the inlet and the outlet valve are completely clear and do not have any moisture, rust or any other ingress that is hindering the flow of air in any way or creating any resistance in the path. After doing so, the box lag has to be done in the way that I explained you earlier. You also have to make sure that the external inspection of the air bottle will include the welding checks that are being uh, made between the foundation of the air bottle and the actual air bottle cylindrical body. So as to make sure that there are again no local stress raises as well as no weak points or cracks available for any damage to occur to the air bottle. Once you have done this, you have to make sure that the pressure gauge is well calibrated and working properly. In this diagram along with the pressure gauge which is very easy to understand that it is the manual interpretation of the pressure that is the inside the air bottle. We are we have also shown you the pressure switch. Now this pressure switch is actually responsible for the auto cut in and auto cut off of the final filling of the compressor that is occurring into the air bottle. So once the air bottle is being pressed up to the final pressure that we are supposed to fill it to the compressor will cut off because of this pressure switch. A similar pressure switch is also available for the auto cut in of the compressor. That is why under UMS operations or even under manned operations, the compressor can be put into auto operation because of this pressure switch triggering in or triggering off the compressor to fill up the air bottle automatically. Having dealt with this, we have to understand that the inlet line would, con would contain a main valve that is responsible for the filling of the air bottle. So under running condition this inlet valve has always should always remain open in the inlet line. Except for that the outlet line would usually be bifurcated into the main line and the auxiliary line. The main line is the one responsible solely for leading the air into the starting air line of the main engine starting system. Whereas the auxiliary line is the one that is responsible for leading the air into the auxiliary system that is the auxiliary engine starting procedure as well as if there is no separate control air bottle available on board. So the same auxiliary line is leading the air into the control air system through the reducing mechanism and the control air line. The other mountings that I had explained you before into the safety part of the air bottle will include the relief valve assembly, the fusible plug and the drain assembly. Now as I told you earlier that the relief valve can directly be mounted onto the air bottle or it can be mounted onto the filling line of the air bottle. This relief valve is supposed to lift when the pressure has risen 5 to 10 percent above the safe working pressure of the air bottle and discharge the excessive air and then seat back when the designated pressure has been achieved again. This can happen if incidentally the compressor has, left run, has been left running under manual condition even though remotely possible because the pressure switch or for the switching off of the compressor would trigger it off. However, if the pressure switch malfunctions, this is an additional safety. As we can also see, the fusible plug can be mounted onto the air bottle in case the relief valve is mounted onto the starting line. Now why this fusible plug is given is in case if there is a fire in engine room, the temperature of the air and the temperature of the bottle would rise simultaneously due to heat exposure. What this would do is in case if there is a damage to the air bottle in such condition, it is extremely lethal because it can provide air which is one of the main components of the fire triangle to further fuel up the fire. So instead of discharging it into the engine room side, this fusible plug contains a temperature dependent weak link which would burst and allow safe passage of air through the air bottle into the line that is connected to the fusible plug and take it further up and discharge it into the open atmosphere thus keeping the engine room safe and making sure that there is no positive discharge of air into the engine room under such hazardous conditions. Also, as I told that the drain valve is also included as a safety item. Now why so? Because this drain valve is solely responsible for draining out the moisture as well as the oil that is being contained in the lower part of the 
air bottle it is inevitable because of the oil that is being carried out during the compression process and the moisture of the atmospheric that uh, atmospheric air that is condensed during the process of compression together combining and forming the carry over material now if this moisture and the oil mixture is allowed to lead into the starting air line it would create a very hazardous situation and would fuel up the starting air explosion chances if the same mixture is allowed to lead to be led into the control air line it would damage the control air components and the other control mechanisms and would make them sluggish as well so to drain out this mixture it is very important to keep the drain valve in working order and continuously monitor and drain it on your watches that is why this is emphasized as a safety element after having dealt with this much portion of the air bottle it is now important to understand how this air bottle is pressure tested for its performance in order to carry out the pressure test of the air bottle we have to make sure that the air bottle has been inspected thoroughly and the process has to be carried out in the presence of a of a surveyor the pressure gauge that is being used to monitor the uh, testing of the air bottle has to be an approved one that is approved by the surveyor so after filling the air bottle after remo after filling the air bottle with a hydraulic flu with a hydraulic medium that is with water we have to make sure that the water is purged out from the topmost part of the air bottle after doing so we also have to make sure that the mountings of the air bottle are removed as those mountings are not a part of the pressure testing and the surfaces that contain those mountings that is the flanges they have to be blank completely once that part is done and the purging is carried out and all the openings are closed and blank properly the inlet line that with the mounted pressure gauge is to be used to hydraulically pressurize the air bottle to a value of 1.25 times the working pressure this working pressure this 1.25 times the working pressure uh, value has to be held for another 10 minutes at least and then the circumference of the air bottle has to be checked at three places at least and it has to be made sure that there has been no alteration in the circumference once that is ensured the surveyor would then allow you to reduce the pressure and pump out the uh, fluid that is the water that is being filled inside and then provide a testing certificate for the safety of the air bottle to approve it for safe usage after inspecting the insides of the air bottle also to make sure that no damage has occurred inside after receiving this safety certificate for the air bottle the air bottle is fit as a pressurized vessel to be used for main and auxiliary systems on board i hope that the understanding of air bottle is now clear to you before we conclude the video i would also like to emphasize on a point which we often miss and is being asked in a lot of mu examinations there is a question called compensating ring which has been often used in terms of the air bottle now this compensating ring is nothing but what happens is that any cylindrical surface or any circular opening when they are made into a cylindrical surface it creates a point of weakness in the air bottle and it creates creates a place where stress can rise after accumulation so those points have to be mitigated and countered for this stress raisers such as the manhole cover or the other mounting openings by additional strengthening this strengthening is done by providing a extra compensating ring that is an extra metallic ring being welded onto the internal surface of these openings so it basically provides as the name suggests compensation for the strength that has been lost by creating such openings therefore the term compensating ring after this explanation i am sure that you do not have any doubts and if you do please feel free to drop into the comment section and let us know what your doubts are and we would be free to answer them whenever necessary please subscribe our channel and keep liking our videos so that we can keep creating such content in the future thank you